Hi, in this video we're going to be taking a look at this Ekins trinocular microscope. So I recently produced a video which you may or may not have seen. If you haven't seen it, click on the link up here. But it's got sort of my experience with buying a microscope from Amscope, a trinocular microscope with video port, uh, a double arm boom stand, and then sort of what I found with buying that in terms of uh, how you get a decent video image and all that kind of stuff. So there's quite a few findings if you haven't watched that video already. But um, at, following on for that video, I had a chat with um, the manufacturer Ekins, and we sort of put together potentially a more useful kit for anyone who wants to do soldering in their lab. One of the main things that I found with the Amscope is that double arm boom stand, which is a really nice stand, is very, very heavy, and it's also really bulky, so it takes up loads of room on your bench. One of the options that I did consider at the time was whether I could find some kind of boom arm stand, but um, it meant faffing around with buying stuff from a whole load of different sellers, and I was already getting uh, a little bit frustrated trying to find exactly the microscope that I wanted. So I went with the double arm boom stand uh, because it came with a kit, and it is nice, but it just takes up so much room. And um, you know, most people are fighting with space in their lab already. The last thing you want is half of your bench space already taken up just by the microscope. And even just moving it around the lab, it's heavy. It means it's going to knock something or you're going to get injured by it moving it all the time. So um, this um, articulated stand is one of the things that I think is a really nice feature about this kit. So if you have a look at the uh, bottom here, actually it clamps onto the bench. So it doesn't have a stand as such. It clamps onto it so it doesn't take up all of your room. Then it's articulated in multiple points meaning that you can uh, easily move it to wherever you're trying to do your soldering. And then also you can adjust the height. There's a little knob on here to adjust the tension, but you can change the height of the microscope head um, coarsely. And then of course you've always got the fine adjustment knob for when you're actually doing focusing. So this is really quite a nice setup. And obviously when it's stowed away, you can position it in such a way that it's not taking up all of your bench space. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, so I'll put the link down below for the listings for this because this is coming as a complete kit. So what you're getting in the kit is the stand, the trinocular head, a camera, the camera focusing attachment, a ring light, various um, lenses at the bottom to give you a, a zoom range of 3.5 to 90 times zoom. Um, and then there's actually another camera attachment port and then this rubber base for um, soldering on your bench. If you haven't already got a rubber ESD mat, this stops you sort of burning your tabletop. So this is the base of the microscope stand and it clamps to the bench with two uh, clamps at the bottom here. And then uh, there's, an, there's a little knob here which allows you to lock the position if you need to of the arm that comes through here. But this is a really chunky solid piece of metal. Uh, and then it goes up here to the articulated arm. And then basically we've got the three sections of the articulated arm and this all comes pre-assembled and then that all attaches to the holder which holds the microscope head. And then just on this side you've got the height adjustment locking knob, although it's pretty stable once you've set it anyway, you don't really need to lock it off. So by default the microscope head has a continuously variable zoom in the range of 7 to 45 and in that case you'd normally just attach this one times lens to the bottom of the microscope head just to protect the lenses at the bottom but then you get two additional lenses so here we've got a two times lens which gives you the up to times 90 zoom and then you've got the 0 0.5 times lens which gives you the lower end so from 3.5 times and the additional effect of using these lenses is that it changes the working distance so if you have the 0.5 times lens on there which is absolutely fine for general usage you end up with quite a reasonable working range and we'll have a look at that shortly um, with the two times lens if you really want to get that close it does mean that you have to have the microscope head quite low down but i've not really come across any situation where you really need that two times lens for general purpose soldering and then the camera that's bundled with the unit is a 37 megapixel camera and it can take photos at that resolution but in terms of video which is what most people are going to use it for it can output 1080p at 60 frames per second both into the HDMI output and then also onto the micro SD card um, which there's a slot on the side and then on the back side there are just three connectors so the 12 volt power supply 
USB connection to your PC. It is a USB-A connector, but it's not a host. Uh, it comes with a lead to plug this into a normal uh, USB-A connector. And then you've got the HDMI port, which outputs to your monitor. And this works really well. It gives pretty good image quality. It's basically on a par with some of the other camera modules that I looked at previously. So this is the one that I was using for quite a lot of my videos, uh, also the blue and the pink ones, and the image quality is basically the same. There's not a huge amount to tell between those. And then one of the things that caused a little bit of trouble with the Amscope microscope was attaching the camera to the microscope head. So if you remember, it came with this focusing attachment, but this was absolutely useless for me. It gave terrible chromatic aberration on the image. It also made it really quite dark and also there was no means of locking the camera position in relation to the head. So, um, you know, if the wires pulled on the camera slightly, the camera would rotate and then obviously the image would rotate. So although it does come bundled with something very similar, um, so it came with this one instead, which does adjust in the same way. Uh, this one did actually lock the camera in position, but we've actually got a proper focusing adjustment here. So this has got some lenses in it and you just twist the knob and it doesn't change the position of the camera, but by twisting the knob you can set the initial focus on the camera. And then basically once you've set that, there is a set screw which means that you can lock it in place. And then when you adjust the focus so that you can see properly through the eyepieces, this is automatically in focus because this is locked um, in relation to the microscope head. So that's a really nice solution, it stops you buying more stuff um, and it seems to work really well. And then you've got the ring light that's bundled with it and it's powered by 12 volts and it seems to be fairly similar to most of the ring lights that you can get on the market. Um, so you've got the dimmer adjustment on the side here if you don't want to use it at full brightness and you can see it's got quite a lot of LEDs in there and gives pretty good illumination from sort of the microscope height that you're going to be using. Right, so this is what the image quality looks like. So this is using the Ekins microscope and we're recording to the SD card and you can see the image quality is very nice indeed. And this is just with the times one lens attachment on the bottom of the microscope, zoomed out as far as it will go. And it probably gives you somewhere in the region of about 90 millimeters working distance. So that's the downside with using the times one lens. What it does mean is you can zoom in quite a long way. So this is all the way to 45. So this is 45 times zoom and you can see Basically, this is going to be pointless for general soldering. Uh, find a surface mount component. So this is a SSOP package. And you can see here that this is absolutely massive on the screen. I can't imagine a time when you're going to need to zoom in this heavily on a component. So let's have a look at what happens when you use the 0.5 times lens instead. Right, so we've now got the 0.5 times Barlow lens on the bottom here. And this is zoomed out as far as it can go. And now you can see we've extended the distance to somewhere like 220 to 230 millimeters. So we've got loads of space here now. And this is a little bit more like what you're more likely to use. And then here's zoomed in to the maximum with the 0 0.5 times lens. So this is giving about 22 and a half times magnification. And again, this is um, probably the maximum that you'd ever need to zoom in on your board. So you can see we're basically fitting in twice as much in the image. But again, the image quality is really nice and uh, absolutely no complaints at all. And then we do have the times two lens. I've never tried this because it's probably going to be way too much, but let's have a look at what the times two lens gets you. And then here's the times 90 zoom. And basically you'd probably only ever need to use this if you were doing PCB inspection. This is a 0 0.3 millimeter via for reference. So we're doing massive amounts of zoom here. Uh, but you've only got around 20 millimetres of working distance, so certainly not for soldering, probably only inspection. So the image quality through the eyepieces is absolutely fantastic. It basically looks the same as through my Amscope. And to further back up that point, one interesting thing is that we had a microscope delivered to work, uh, basically the same style as this, and it came with the same instruction book as this one did. So it said the SRM series instructions, and that's the same as what's been bundled with this, which suggests that the microscope head itself is all from the same factory. Whether or not they have used different optics inside, I can't tell you, but I can tell you that the image quality through the eyepieces is absolutely fantastic. Um, and, you know, for roughly half the price, this seems to be a, a really good bargain. So I'm not going to do any soldering in this video. I think I'll save that for some future videos. I've got various projects that I need to assemble. I'm also going to do a live stream soon, so we can use it in that to assemble a UniSolder 5.2 board. 
Uh, for those that are not familiar, it's a do-it-yourself soldering station which can, which can drive quite a wide range of soldering iron handles. And one of my subscribers, Anton, is very kindly sending me one of those boards to assemble. So we'll do a live stream soon and you can ask any questions then. Obviously ask any questions in the comments down below. Uh, but if you are looking for a trinocular microscope bundled with a camera, this does seem to be very good value for money and it does perform really well. I'm quite impressed. So I'll put the links down below in the description to the various listings for this item. If you have any comments, criticism, praise or whatever, stick them down in the comments box. It's always nice to read your comments, any suggestions for the channel, that kind of thing, uh, just leave them down below. But until next time, thanks for watching.